150 thousandths, making it a cylinder. Moving on to sheet number two, we're going to draw a star on top of our part and extrude the surrounding areas of our star, creating this flange that later on we're going to put some bolt holes into. After that, we're going to put in this eagle engraving. And then lastly, we have five bolts on a bolt hole circle with a 36 degree start angle. So let's jump over to Fusion 360 and learn how to make this part. I'm over here in Fusion 360. As I mentioned, our very basic shape that we're going to be using is a circle. So we're going to go C on the keyboard for circle. We have our triad location here. And then we also have these squares that indicate these are the planes. These squares directly coincide to our view cube up here. This particular one, we're going to be clicking on the top plane. And then our circle needs to be uh, locked into our origin or our datum location here. So we're going to left click on the origin and then drag our mouse out and type in our measurement of one inch, 950 thousandths. Afterwards, you're going to right click and press and pull, and we're going to extrude this down 750 thousandths. So minus 750 thousandths, and then enter. Moving on to sheet number two. Sheet number two, we're going to create this star. The way that we're going to do this is very similar to how you were taught in grade school to make a star. We're going to go L on the keyboard. Make sure you're clicking on the top of the part and you're not clicking on these planes over here. That's a common mistake that beginners have. We're going to draw a vertical line going from our origin straight up. Notice that Fusion 360 automatically put in this uh, vertical constraint here. We're going to click on our line and press X on the keyboard, changing it into a construction line. Now that we have our point landed on the outside of our circle, and notice that it should have a coincident constraint, we're going to pattern this around five times. We're going to go to Create and down to Circular Pattern. In our pop-up window, it's asking, what objects do you want to pattern? Well, I want to pattern this point. The center point, we're going to select that as our origin, and then the quantity of instances that we have is five to match our star. Afterwards, we're going to press OK, and we have our five points to, to reference off of. Now it's as simple as just connecting the dots. So we're going to go L on the keyboard, and then we're just going from one location to the other. Just like that. Now that we have our star, we're going to right click, press and pull. We're going to select the surrounding area. Make sure you're not selecting the star, but you're, you are definitely selecting the surrounding area. And we're going to subtract that three, 375 thousandths and then press enter. Now that we have our star, we need to take a look at this inside corner here. And according to our print, we have a, a 175 thousandths fillet here. We're going to go to modify and down to fill it, down to fill it. We're going to click on all five of these corners, just orbiting the part around so I can click on all those. And then we're going to type our dimension in at 175 thousandths. Fusion 360 remembers the last thing that you did. Um, if you right click and go to the top, it will. you can go to repeat fillet. This time we're going to click on the tips of our star. There's five of those in total. Those in total. Notice in our pop-up window it says five edges. This one, we're going to fill it this dimension at 15 thousandths, and then press Enter. Our star is looking good. 
Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to land our eagle cutter on here so we can do our engraving. There's two things that we have to do. We have to download the eagle cutter from the website or either through our Google Classroom. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to File, Upload, and then Select Files. Your file should be in your area here. So notice all I'm doing is I'm zooming down and mine is labeled here as the Eagle Cutter. And then press open and then upload. This generally takes about 20 to 30 seconds for it to upload. It's fairly quick. Okay. Now we're going to come in and we're going to actually save our part. This particular part is going to be labeled as the Titan 5M. And then I'm going to open up my data panel showing me all of my parts. And we can see our Titan 5M here and our Eagle Cutter. We're going to right click on our Eagle Cutter and go to Insert into Current Design. and then hit proceed and then we're going to close out our data panel. Now if you did not start your part from the origin you may have an issue here. When Fusion 360 brings anything in um, as a new component it will actually land it at the origin location. So if you did not model your part correctly you're going to have some issues and you'll have to figure out how to come up with a solution on that. For those of you that did model your part correctly, all you have to do is press OK, and this little coin is in the exact location centered over the top of our star. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a sketch on top of our star. So create, down to create sketch, we're going to click on the top of the star now. And then we're going to project the geometry of the eagle down to that sketch. P on the keyboard is the shortcut for project. We're going to click on the eagle and then zoom in and then the head of the eagle and then press OK. Once you have that projected, you can turn the visibility of that component off and you should have a sketch on top of your star now. We're not done with our sketch yet. What we're going to do is we're going to offset some lines in here. Um, that will enable us to do a, a mock-up of what the engraving is going to look like. So we're going to go O for offset on the keyboard. We're going to click on the outside perimeter of our eagle and we're going to offset these lines at seven thousandths of an inch. O for offset again and we're going to offset it the other direction. Negative seven thousandths of an inch. We're going to do the head the same exact way. Seven thousandths of an inch and then negative seven thousandths of an inch. So you should have three lines, one running down the center, and then two that are offset seven thousandths of an inch from each other. Now that our lines are in place, we're going to go right click, press and pull. We're going to select this geometry in here. And make sure you don't have any other faces selected. The distance according to the print, the engraving needs to be down negative seven thousandths of an inch. And then we are going to be making this feature with a 90 degree included cutter. So the angle of our cut will be 45 degrees. So we're going to type in negative 45 and then press OK. Notice if we zoom in now, we will actually see this like valley in here 
that's following around the outside perimeter of our eagle. And that will look very similar to what the part will look like after we engrave it. Moving on to sheet number three. Sheet number three is all about our bolts and our bolt hole. The big thing on this particular part um, is our bolt hole is on this flange down here. It's not on the top of the part. So we're going to create a new sketch and it's going to be on this flange. We're going to do this by going C on the keyboard. We're going to start with a circle to mimic our bolt hole circle. We're going to click on the top of the flange. Make sure you're not clicking on the top of the part or, <clears throat> or these uh, planes over here, but you are clicking on the top of the flange. We're going to go concentric to our datum or the origin here and we're going to draw out this circle and dimension it at one inch five hundred thousandths. We're going to go L on the keyboard for a line. We're going to go right from the origin and go straight up and we're going to add in a concentric constraint right on the end of our circle. So you're going to terminate that line right on the end of our circle. And you need to make sure this line has a vertical constraint on it too. Afterwards, we're going to change both the circle and that line to a construction geometry. So click on the circle, press X, click on the line, press X. Almost done now. We're going to go back to our origin and draw another line terminating it again on the end of our circle. And we also need to change that to a construction line. There's an angle between these two lines. So we're going to go D on the keyboard, click on the line, and then click on your vertical line. And you're going to drag your mouse in between, giving us an angular measurement. The angular measurement is 36 degrees and then press enter. So this particular angle is very, very important. They call this a start angle. Once you have this in place, we're going to do a circular pattern off of this point. So create down to circular pattern. The object that you're gonna pattern is the end point of that line. Make sure you're not selecting the line, but just the end point. Then you're going to select your center point in the pop-up window and go down to our origin. There are five bolt holes in total, so we're going to change the quantity to five and then press enter. Now that we have our locations in place, we're going to go H on the keyboard for hole and we're going to select all five locations. In our pop-up window here, we just need to fill out some information. This particular hole is going to be countersunk um, because it does want us to chamfer the edges of our hole. It is going to be tapped for threads. These particular threads are going to be offset. Um, notice on the right hand side, it states that the threads need to be 275 thousandths deep. However, the hole needs to be 300 thousandths deep. Underneath, we're going to look at our pictogram of what the hole is going to look like. This very first edit window here is talking about the overall depth of the hole. According to the print, this is 300 thousandths. The chamfer diameter, according to the print, is 265 thousandths at 45 degrees. One thing that I want you to notice is Fusion 360 has got a little bit of an error in here. But notice that this dimension has turned red. So we're actually going to, um, we're going to go back to that 440 thousandths for right now. Because we have to change one thing. Um, this is kind of a workaround. 
The workaround is, is we're going to change our size down here. We're going to go up to the decimal equivalent of quarter of an inch, which is 250 thousandths. We're going to set our designation at quarter 20 and our class at 2B. Now we can go back up to our chamfer diameter and type in 265. And it's still showing red, um, which means that there's still an issue. If you're experiencing this, the best way to go about this is just cancel out and repeat the, uh, the process. So countersunk, tapped, offset threads. We're gonna change our size to 250 thousandths, class 2B, and then we're gonna start filling this information out. Again, this is a, an error in Fusion 360. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but notice by us closing it out and starting it back up, no more air. Our countersink angle is going to be 90 degrees included. The depth of our threads are 275 thousandths. And everything else is looking good. And then we're going to press OK. I always save my chamfering to the, the very last. Um, I would highly recommend doing this. Um, this is especially useful when you start programming parts as you can come in and suppress the, the chamfers at the end. That way you're dealing with just a single line. Um, the other thing is, is if you chamfer before you put your, your fillets in, your chamfers will kind of look kind of weird um, and they will not be accurate. So we're going to enter our chamfers right now. So modify down to chamfer. We're going to click on the top of the star, the top of the, the flange, and then the bottom of the flange. We're going to chamfer these to 10 thousandths of an inch and then press enter. This is a good opportunity. Orbit your part around. Make sure you got the bottom of the part too. Double check your part and make sure it's completely accurate according to the print. This concludes our quick tutorial on how to make the Titan 5M.